fundamental in the spiritual growth in the body of Christ. We are experiencing times of great transformation in which the Holy Spirit is producing changes and reformation within God's church. The subject on deliverance provokes much controversy, but as you watch this program, you will understand which areas of your life will greatly be blessed by receiving the revelation on the ministry of inner healing and deliverance. Iniquity is the original sin of man, and it came from Satan. Satan was the first one to rebel against God. He was made perfect. He was created perfect. But however, it was found iniquity in his heart, and therefore he influenced man in the Garden of Eden with iniquity, and therefore we are all born in iniquity. It is not only the original sin, it is lawlessness to be without law, to be without the government of God in your life, to call your, the shots in your life, to be in control of your life, and therefore be out of God's will. And it's a sin that all humanity suffers from. Iniquity entered into the human race when Adam and Eve were tempted by Satan to disobey and to rebel against what God had said. And therefore, from there on, everyone inherits the iniquity, you're born with it. A baby is born with iniquity. There's nothing you can do because the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's iniquity in each one of us. Even a small child is born with that sin. It's the rebellion in the human nature to rebel against the Holy God. Pastor, this is Jennifer. I'm sorry, Theron. Theron uh, uh, has a tremendous testimony, and because of the power of her testimony, at the very end of the retreat, there was a release of freedom for one of our Russian disciples, and I want her to tell her testimony really quick, and sure. then we go. Um, I was uh, born, and uh, I was always rejected. At three years old, my mom left to the United States, and... I always felt rejected when Mother's Day came around, when my birthday, she wasn't there. Um, by the age of six, I was molested by my stepfather. And then at the age of eight, my natural father also touched me. Then at that same age, my cousin also touched me. At the age of 12, I was raped. And when I was 14, I really wanted to commit suicide, attempted, but nothing happened. Then um, I got married to an abusive husband. I only lasted eight months in the marriage. And uh, I was in deep depression. When I came to find out, uh, I told my mom a few weeks, a few mo months ago, uh, Mom, I had never told anyone, but I wanted to tell you that uh, 12 years old, I was raped. And then she told me, uh, she told me, I never told you, but you, I was raped. <laughs> That's how I had you. And then your grandmother was also raped when she was 12. So... When they were delivering about rape, I just started throwing up, manifesting, and God delivered me from that generational curse. Jesus paid the full price for our sin and our iniquity, our rebellion against God the Father. He was uh, the perfect sacrifice. He had never sinned. We needed that as a payment for our sin, for the wages of sin is death. Now, uh, when Jesus went to the cross, there, everything that humanity has ever done, every sinful act, every rebellion against God, every injustice, because injustice is another root or another branch of iniquity that mankind has done was placed on him, and he paid the entire and complete price for our iniquity. Therefore, we can go to the cross. That is the only place that man can be set free from iniquity. We go to the cross to have our sins paid, but we also go to the cross because iniquity is the foundation of generational curses. We inherit iniquity from our ancestors, and therefore we need to go to the cross to be able to be free from those sins also.
trade upon that surface. Do it right now. Put your feet. Put your feet to the ground. Open the scriptures. The book of Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I want you to know what um, happened before this verse. Chapter 3, verse 21. Jesus was baptized. Chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the desert. Chapter 4, verse 14. Jesus was came out from the desert temptation overcame temptation and then verse uh, verse 14 we saw Jesus came out from that trial from that desert came out filled with the Spirit of God and verse 18 this is what he said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor number two he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to recovery of the sight to the blind, to set liberty, to set at liberty them at the bruise. Another translation reads, to preach um, deliverance to the bruise. So number one, he said to preach the gospel to the poor. And here the word poor is not someone that is, is poor in the spirit. Poor is someone that doesn't have any, any material things. Financially, materially. That's what he's talking about being poor. But there's a second word. And this word is very powerful. And the Bible says, He has anointed me. I am empowered to come against poverty. I am empowered to bring good news to the person that doesn't have any job, to any person that is lacking financial um, uh, money, whatever. I am empowered. You are empowered by God. I want to emphasize it. Please lift your hands and say it. I am anointed by the Holy Spirit. Can you say I'm anointed? Number two. Number two. Preach the gospel to the poor. Number two. He has sent me. He has sent me. This is Jesus talking. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. The second purpose of the anointing is to heal the brokenhearted. And now, this is the purpose of the anointing. Now, my question is, I want you to write it down. Why do we have so many broken hearted people in church? Why we have so many broken hearted people? Because we have replaced, we have replaced deliverance and inner healing in church. And we have replaced it with many things. Psychology, psychiatry counseling and many things those things have their place I believe in counseling I, I deal with people and and I think I believe in that but deliverance has the right place and let me put it this way if you're trying to apply the wrong the wrong medicine remedy on the wrong thing it will never work if I come if I call you here and I start talking to you trying to guide you trying to lead you into making the right decision and counseling and talking to you and as a demon that is working in you I am counseling demons Can I, can I hear an amen? In other words, we have replaced deliverance. We have replaced inner healing. And my point to you is this, that there are so many broken hearted at the church. Who is a broken hearted person? The word broken is the word centribo in the Greek. And means to have the heart broken 
fragmented in pieces. Broken hearted is someone that his or her heart is broken in pieces. Why humanity? Why do we have broken hearted? A broken heart? Why is broken? Why is it in pieces? And let me put it this way. This is an example that I always teach the people. There is a term in deliverance called soul tie. Lift your hand. Say with me, soul tie. Say it louder, please. Soul tie is this. Whenever you become or you get close to a person emotionally, physically, and spiritually, you get close to someone in a illegal relationship, fornication, adultery, any other kind of relationship, and you become one with the person, this is you and this is the person. And when you become one with the person, the Bible says, when you have sex with a prostitute, you become one with her. So in other words, all the sins and the generational curses and everything she has, it will come to you. If you go lay down with, go to bed or sex with any men that has three women, when you become one, you become soul tie with the person. So now become soul tie means that this person become one. Now, there is a moment that you understand this is a legal relationship and you need to stop. Because you are bound to that person. And when you do this, it will break pieces of that person and pieces of yourself going to the other person. That's what the people sometimes says this way. Have you heard people saying, I am a double-minded person? I feel like I'm not myself. I feel like something of me is not in me. So pieces, fragments, pieces of the soul and things of the other person came with you. And pieces of yourself went with the other person. That is the reason the person, his heart, her heart is fragmented. Jesus paid the entire and full price for the iniquity of all mankind. That is the great news that we have for the world. Jesus came to die for our sins. Our iniquity is not only our sins. Iniquity is the foundation of generational curses. Since humanity started to rebel against God from the inception, from the Garden of Eden, iniquity has increased throughout the generations, one generation to another. And therefore, there's, if you could imagine, just a big pot of sin, of injustice, of evil, of wickedness, of twistedness, everything that man has done throughout the history, that was put on Jesus at the cross. And we go to the cross not only to be saved from our sins, but to pay for the iniquity with which we were born. We were born because we inherited it from our generations, and that is the basis of a generational curse. Even babies are born with iniquity because it comes in our bloodline. Uh, all have sinned. All fall short of the glory of God. Not only our personal sin, but generations past. Let's say your grandfather, or your grandmother, your mother, um, they were in uh, the occult and they uh, had idolatry in their lives. There's a curse for that. As a matter of fact, in Deuteronomy, it speaks about the generations that obey God and all the blessings that follow it. Deuteronomy 28, it's an awesome chapter. And it also talks in, in the verse 15, if you do not obey God, then these curses will follow you. And it includes sickness, chronic illness, um, poverty, disintegration of the family, divorce. There's so many curses that come upon humanity because of iniquity. So we have a place to go. We need to go. We need to go to the cross to be paid. That iniquity needs to be paid for there. But we have to appropriate it. Everyone needs to go there and receive it for themselves. 
For about four to five generations, they had something called endometriosis, where the blood will flow backwards into the fallopian, fallopian tubes. It will scar the fallopian tubes to the point that they'll have severe pain. They could not do anything for two days. It operated in her, in her sisters, in her cousins, in her daughter. She met Jesus Christ 20 years ago and passed her for 20 years now. She's been completely free. The doctors told her daughter, you will not have babies because your fallopian tubes are scarred. Now she has a two-year-old daughter. She's been completely set free from this curse by the power of Jesus Christ. There is many things that God had delivered me from many other curses in my family, but I chose to give this testimony because it, 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 it makes me angry when I hear Christian women saying, oh, you know, the menstrual cramps are just normal. It's part of the normal thing for women. It is not normal because I've seen it in my life. I've seen it in my daughter. I've seen it in my families, how the Lord has, has taken that curse away from them. And when they say to them, oh, you know, you can never bear children because that's just the way it is. That is not the way it is. And all the women out Come there on. that say, all the women out there that say, you know, menstrual cramps, you know, that's just part of the hormone. That's just normal. That is not normal. That's Satan telling you that that's the way it is in your life. But that is Come not the way it's got to be in your life. Pastor, these are all curses that were broken on healings in the body. Three generations of diabetes. Uh, three generations of heart problems. Uh, one generation uh, with the struggle of cancer, she was healed of skin cancer, uh, and I saw two generations of can three generations. The grandfather had stomach cancer. The father died at 36. He smoked from 12 all the way to 36 and died of cancer. And he as well uh, was um, in his life. It broke. He's 37 years old now. He's alive. He's already broken the curse of cancer in his life. All four are testimonies of curses that were broken and healings okay. that took place. How many generations? Three. My Three grandmother, my mother, and I was diagnosed with diabetes in December. Okay. When did you get your deliverance? When I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So now I was you, not Christian. Uh, I, you know, I got baptized this year. In so April. now, what is your condition now? Uh, I'm, my uh, blood sugar is, you know, the best ever. You know. My Come mother, on. my mother has been a member of this church for over 10 years. And when I told her, because all along they told me you will be diabetic, you will be diabetic. And when it came, it was just I expected it to be. And my mother would pray. I expected it to be. And my mother will say, break the curse. You know, break, you know, do not accept it, you know. I you break the curse. And, you know, when I accepted Jesus, I said, you are my healer, you are my deliverer, you are my provider. You know, it's all up to you, my Lord. So now you're free. Healthier than Three that. generations of uh, heart, heart attacks? Or? No, they had heart conditions. My grandmother had, like, fluid around her heart. Uh, I'm not sure about my great-grandmother, but my great-grandmother died with the heart problems. And my mom died with heart problems. What happened to you now? How is your heart? Oh, no, my heart is perfect. <laughs> I, I, wanna, I just want to say this. Uh, I was taken to the hospital once because I was working, and something happened, and they had to take me. Uh, I was in there for like three days. So they gave me a stress test, and it was funny because I didn't know they had a workout room because I like to work out. So when they took me, they said... Um, I go, well, I'm finished that quickly. You should have told me you had a workout room. And they go, yeah. I say, but you broke the record. I go, what that's supposed to mean? I say, because normally it takes a person about 20 minutes that you did it in seven minutes. And your heart is perfect. But then they came back the next morning and said, I had to have a stent in my heart. I go, a stent? And I didn't know what a stent was. So I said, okay, I don't, I don't understand that. I'm healthy. So um, anyway, the next morning they came in and they said, oh, we made a mistake. <laughs> Four generations of mental depression and suicide. Mental depression. Her grandfather was in a state of depression. He was isolated and they had to remove things so he wouldn't take his life. Her father uh, was in depression and committed suicide. She was attacked with depression and attempted to commit suicide. And her daughter attempted to commit suicide three times. In the moment she came to the church, she received the word of the cross and the blood and deliverance, has been totally delivered for the glory of God. And her and her daughter and her children are totally set free for the glory Come of God. Come on, Jesus. people. Okay, daughter, how many years was that? How did the Lord deliver you? Me, yeah. um, I would say already like five years. Five years. And I so, have not seen you, you it You know the daughter. reason I'm asking you? 
because they say, yeah, that was that was a moment. That was, you know, she was cuckoo in that moment. And she was emotional. Five years, the Five Lord delivered you. So it came from your. My grandfather, my dad committed suicide. He committed suicide. My dad died. He committed suicide. My daughter tried three times before I knew the Lord. I tried one time. You tried. I tried to, uh, with pills, and the Lord set me free, and that has not touched my daughter. No more. No more. Wow. He had generations that they were in witchcraft. Even him had been in witchcraft. They had all kinds of problems. He had high blood pressure. He had asthma. Had affected him. Had affected his children. When the curse was broken on him, it was broken on his children. There were all kinds of problems in his family, and the Lord delivered them. Okay, your parents were involved in witchcraft. Yes. That's one of the causes of curses. And then, as a result, it came down to me, it came down to my sister. She's still in La Brujeria, but I'm not. I broke it. I broke it, and I pray for her, and I know she's going to come to the Lord one day. Come on, people. Generational curses are very important that we renounce to them. Our ancestors sinned, and someone in the family line has to stop that sin from c continuing in that line. Someone has to stand with the blood of Jesus. Someone has to say, I repent for the sin of my generations. I repent for the sin of my father and my grandfather. I repent from the sins of my generations, even generations, ten generations ago. Because uh, all those sins are transferred over. Just like uh, you get the brown eyes and, and your, or the blonde hair, you also get the generational curses of maybe uh, heart attacks or liver problems, or uh, alcoholism, addictions, or sexual immorality, uh, perversion. Everything comes over from our past, and therefore we need to be set free by the blood of Jesus. There are many areas that need deliverance, including the moral area, the emotional area. Many people suffer from depression, and um, they don't know why. They need to be ministered. There's many thing, things that are, are not necessarily a sin, if you would look at them that way. People would not consider depression a sin. It's an oppression that the devil brings to a life of someone because they have allowed unbelief. They don't have the joy of the Lord. They don't have a relationship with God. And therefore, you need deliverance in that area. It's not necessarily what you would point out to be a sin, but people suffer all their lives with it. Illnesses. We, ha we can be delivered from many illnesses such as, as arthritis because we forgive. Forgiveness, unforgiveness is a sin. So forgiveness is the door that we open for God to be able to then deliver us. So that's another area. The moral area. Whenever you have had a relationship outside of marriage, in, in, in moral sex, that opens doors to demons. The um, emotional area also we covered the physical area, the mind needs to be delivered. The mind needs to be delivered from oppression. There's people who have confusion in their mind and they don't re really realize that there's an oppression in their mind because they have had uh, occult, the occult in the past. The, everything that is involved with demonic worship controls the mind. And therefore, when you receive Jesus, you need to go back and renounce to every open door in their cult. So then therefore your mind, you have the mind of Christ. You receive the mind of Christ. You have to receive that also. The subject on inner healing and deliverance is very extensive. It is a ministry that God's people must come to know and understand. The Word of God declares in Hosea 4, 6, My people perish from a lack of knowledge. Experience the fullness of living a free and abundant life. We have resources to help you accomplish that today. A Time for Change with Apostle Guillermo Maldonado is a program dedicated to transforming biblical principles and bringing back God's moral values to our society. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. If you have a prayer need or interested in obtaining a copy of today's program in audio or video, please write us at 14100 Southwest 144 Avenue, Miami, Florida, 33186. Call us at 305 382 3171 or visit our webpage kingjesusministry.org 
A Time for Change is produced by ERJ Media at King Jesus International Ministry. Thanks to the prayers and support of our friends in your area. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, today is a time for change.